The Pandronians' shattered, grotesquely sliced faces leaked blue fluids onto the smouldering wreckage of their crushed ships, knowing that engaging humans in battle was the worst and last mistake of their feeble alien lives. Captain Stephen Burns of the UES Indomitable scowled at the holographic star map on his bridge. Red pulsing icons signaled massive Pandronian warships advancing on defenseless human mining outposts in the disputed Kepler-22 system. 20,000 civilians, his civilians, in mortal danger. The grizzled Terran Navy vet's knuckles cracked as he gripped the command chair. Thirty years fighting the ruthless Pandronian Empire had taught him their battle tactics inside and out. And now they dared attack his people? Slaughter innocents? Anger boiled in his gut, not on his watch. Emergency FTL jump now, Burns barked. Get our battle group to Kepler-22. The Indomitable's fusion drives exploded to life, tearing open a crackling wormhole. As the ship plunged into swirling blue vortex, Burns turned to his XO, Commander Johnson. This is it. The damn bugs want a war? They're going to get one. He punched up a fleet-wide channel. This is Captain Burns, listen up. When we exit FTL, expect heavy resistance. But we are the line between those Pandronian bastards and our people. We do not flinch, we do not hesitate. We hold the line, and may God help us if we fail. The wormhole collapsed with a flash as the UES ships hurtled toward the distant binary stars of Kepler-22, toward a desperate battle against a vicious alien foe, toward the flashpoint for a war that could engulf the galaxy. The Terran Republic and Pandronian Empire had skirmished for decades, but now the fate of humanity itself hung in the balance. The Indomitable shuddered as it ripped its way back into normal space, the swirling chaos of the wormhole collapsing behind it. But there was no time to catch a breath. The instant the ship's sensors came online, proximity alarms blared across the bridge, a dozen obsidian-hulled Pandronian warships hung in space before them, angular and alien, like a swarm of black hornets. Bright plasma torpedoes lanced out from their launch tubes, streaking towards the defenseless mining facilities orbiting Kepler-22. Aegis system now, Burns shouted over the din of the alarms. Protect those stations! Hundreds of life pods belched forth from the besieged mining facilities, tiny specks against the void, fleeing for their lives as the plasma torpedoes bore down on them. The Indomitable's experimental point defense lasers swiveled on their turrets, tracking the incoming projectiles with inhuman precision. Then, all at once, they opened fire. Dozens of high-energy beams scythed through space, intercepting the plasma warheads and detonating them in titanic blossoms of fire. The mining stations weathered the blasts, intact but battered, Burns gripped his chairs tighter, his eyes never leaving the tactical display. The Pandronians wouldn't give up that easily. They never did. Fexo, I want birds in the void now, he growled. Raptors and broadswords, gut those bugs. Aye, sir. Johnson snapped a quick salute, then grabbed the intercom. All fighters, all bombers, scramble, scramble, scramble. The Indomitable rumbled as its launch bays opened, disgorging scores of sleek Raptor attack craft and heavily armed broadsword bombers. The human ships roared towards the Pandronian fleet, dripping with missiles and autocannons, hungry for alien blood. But the Pandronians were quick to respond. Swarms of sickle-shaped interceptors, all sharp edges and spines, poured forth from the enemy carriers to meet the human assault. In seconds, the space around Kepler-22 devolved into a storm of whirling metal, tracer fire and missile contrails. Terran craft danced and weaved, strafing the obsidian hulls of Pandronian ships and blasting apart enemy interceptors in sprays of blue viscera. But the aliens gave as good as they got. Pandronian plasma cannons flensed human strike craft into molten slag, while the whirling blades of the sickle ships sliced raptors and broadswords to ribbons. On the Indomitable's bridge, Burns watched the madness unfold, his expression hewn from stone. The Pandronians were tenacious bastards, he had to give them that. But he and his crew hadn't come this far to let a bunch of overgrown insects slaughter innocent civilians. Not while he still drew breath. He keyed the fleet-wide comm. 
This is Captain Burns. All ships, weapons free, hold the line. We stop them here or we die trying. And if we die, we're taking these alien bastards with us. Burns watched the chaos unfold, his face grim. The Indomitable shuddered as her guns pounded away at the Pandronian ships, the bridge shaking with each salvo. But even as his raptors and broadswords wreaked havoc among the enemy fleet, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The bugs were putting up a hell of a fight, but their tactics seemed almost predictable, like they wanted to keep the Terran ships focused on the battle in front of them. Suddenly alarms blared across the bridge. Sir, Johnson shouted, his eyes wide, massive energy signature decloaking to aft. It's a dreadnought. Burns spun to the tactical display just in time to see the monstrous form of a Pandronian dreadnought, the fist of Antares, shimmer into existence behind the indomitable. Its obsidian hull seemed to swallow the light around it, and its main ion cannons glowed with an eerie blue light. Evasive maneuvers, Burns roared, but it was too late. The dreadnought's cannons fired, lancing out with beams of pure energy. They slammed into the indomitable's aft shields, which flared brightly for a moment before collapsing entirely. The ship shuddered violently as the beams carved into its hull, slicing through decks and bulkheads without difficulty. Hull breach decks twelve through fifteen, someone shouted over the din of alarms. We're venting atmosphere. On the view screens, Burns could see bodies tumbling into the void, sucked out by the inexorable pull of vacuum. His gut clenched. Those were his people out there, dying in the cold of space. Rage boiled up inside him, hot and fierce. Those bug bastards, he snarled. XO, come about. Bring our forward guns to bear on that dreadnought's command tower. Johnson relayed the orders, and the indomitable swung ponderously about, her manoeuvring thrusters firing in great gouts of flame. As the ship's prow lined up with the fist of Antares, Burns thumped his hand down on the weapons control. Fire! The Indomitable's forward particle cannons roared to life, sending streams of incandescent energy screaming towards the Pandronian dreadnought. They impacted against the ship's shields, which flared brightly and held. Burns stared in disbelief. Those shields should be buckling, he said, his mind racing. The bugs have upgraded their tech. He watched as the dreadnought began to turn away, no doubt preparing to cloak and flank them again. But Burns wasn't about to let that happen. Not again. Broadswords, he barked into the calm. Quantum torpedoes, full volley, take that bastard down. The broadsword bombers, which had been holding position in the shadow of the Indomitable, roared to life. They screamed towards the fist of Antares, weaving through the chaos of the ongoing dogfight. As they closed in, their torpedo bays snapped open, releasing a swarm of glowing projectiles. The quantum destabilizer torpedoes streaked towards the dreadnought, their forms shimmering and ghostly. They passed right through the ship's weakened shields as if they weren't even there, then detonated deep within the hull. For a moment, nothing happened. Then the fist of Antares seemed to bulge outwards like a balloon being inflated. Bright jets of flame erupted from its hull as secondary explosions tore through its innards. Finally, with a blinding flash, the dreadnought came apart, torn to pieces from the inside out. Burns allowed himself a grim smile as the fist of Antares died its fiery death. It had been a close thing, but they'd weathered the ambush. The Pandronians weren't going to roll over the mining facilities today. Good work, people, he said over the general calm. But this fight's not over yet. Regroup and rearm. We hold the line regardless of the cost. As the fist of Antares broke apart in a dazzling display of destruction, the remaining Pandronian ships abruptly disengaged from the battle. Burns watched with a mix of satisfaction and unease as they regrouped in a tight formation high above Kepler-22's swirling azure gas giant. They're up to something, he muttered, his eyes narrowing. XO, bring us about pursuit vector. We end this now before they can slip away or call for backup. The Indomitable's engines flared as the battleship accelerated towards the retreating enemy fleet, her escorts falling into formation around her. But as they closed the distance, a hail from the Pandronian flagship crackled across the comm. 
The view screen flickered, then purposed into the image of a Pandronian unlike any Burns had seen before. His chitinous exoskeleton was jet black, adorned with jagged spikes and pulsing green runes. His compound eyes glowed with malevolent intelligence, and his mandibles clacked as he spoke. I am Deathbringer Kazavoth, favoured herald of Emperor Antares, the alien hissed, each word dripping with venom. You humans have defied the divine will of the Emperor for the last time. Behold, the instrument of your destruction. On the view screen, the hull of Kazvoth's ship, the Soul Reaper, began to unfurl like the petals of some nightmarish flower. Nestled at its heart was a pulsating orb of sickly green energy, growing brighter by the second. Burns felt his blood run cold. He recognized that weapon, had seen the classified intel reports, a necroflux cannon capable of cracking a planet in half, outlawed by every sane civilization in the galaxy. Other humans of this system will be the first to feel the Emperor's wrath, Kazavoth gloated, his mandibles twisting into a perverse approximation of a smile. But they will not be the last. Soon all of your kind will kneel before the might of the Pandronian Empire, or be extinguished. Burns banged his hand on the arm of his command chair, his mind racing, the mining facilities and the thousands of civilians. If that cannon fired, they'd all be atomized in an instant. He had to act, and fast. He leaned forward, his eyes hard as flint. Kazvoth, he barked, his voice booming across the comm. This is Captain Stephen Burns of the UES Indomitable. I'm giving you one chance. Power down your weapon and surrender, or I'll blast you and your ship to atoms. The Deathbringer's laughter crackled across the link, harsh and grating. You amuse me, human. You think your pitiful threats can stay the hand of the Emperor's chosen? The Necroflux cannon will fire, and your precious colonies will die screaming, and there is nothing you can do to stop it. Burns' eyes flicked to the tactical display. The Soul Reaper's energy readings were spiking, the Necroflux cannon powering up to fire. He had a minute, maybe less, before it unleashed planet-cracking devastation. He turned to Johnson, his expression grim. Bring the forward rail cannons to bear on that flagship. Shunt all power to weapons and forward shields, and get our broadswords in the air. We're taking that abomination out, here and now. Johnson nodded sharply, relaying the orders with rapid precision. The indomitable shuddered as her engines roared to full military power, the inertial compensators straining to keep up. On the view screen, the Soul Reaper loomed larger, the pulsating green of the Necroflux cannon at its heart, growing ever brighter. Burns gripped the arms of his chair, until his fingers tightening and his eyes fixed on the enemy ship. This was it, the moment of truth. In the next few seconds, the fate of Kepler-22 and everyone on it would be decided. The future of the war, perhaps the future of humanity itself, hung in the balance. And as the distance between the Indomitable and the Soul Reaper shrank to nothing, Burns whispered a silent prayer to whatever gods might be listening. Come on, you big ugly bitch, he growled, his finger hovering over the fire control. Let's dance. Burns' mind raced as he watched the Soul Reaper's hull unfurl, revealing the pulsing abomination at its heart. The Necroflux cannon glowed brighter, its sickly green light casting eerie shadows across the bridge. He had seconds, maybe less, before it fired and doomed everyone on Kepler-22. All broadswords, new target, he barked into the comm. Concentrate your torpedoes on that cannon. Indomitable and escorts provide covering fire. The human ships surged forward, the Indomitable's railguns roaring as they spat hypervelocity slugs at the Soul Reaper's shields. The broadswords, engines howling, raced towards the Pandronian flagship, weaving and jinking to avoid the storm of return fire. But Kazvoth was ready for them. With a chittering command, he unleashed swarms of drone fighters from the Soul Reaper's launch bays. The machines, each no larger than a raptor but jam-packed with pulse cannons, tore into the human formation with insectile ferocity. Evasive maneuvers, Johnson shouted over the comm, stay on target. The broadswords jinked and rolled, trying to shake the drones, but the machines were too fast, too agile. 
Pulse fire stitched across the bombers' hulls, breaching cockpits and igniting fuel lines. One by one, the human ships winked out, consumed by fireballs that flared briefly and died in the void. But a handful of broadswords broke through the swarm, battered but unbowed. They bore down on the Necroflux cannon, torpedo bays snapping open. Kazavoth's eyes widened in sudden fear. Fire! Fire now! he screeched. The broadswords launched, quantum torpedoes leaping from their tubes and streaking towards the cannon. For a heartbeat it looked as if they would impact, would tear the abomination apart before it could fire. But at the last instant, a shimmering field of energy flared to life around the cannon, a crackling lattice of exotic particles. The torpedoes struck the field and detonated, their explosions absorbed and dissipated by the barrier. Kasvoth's laughter filled the comm, grating and triumphant. Foolish humans, he crowed, did you truly believe your primitive weapons could pierce the divine shield of the Emperor? The Necroflux cannon is invincible. Witness now the folly of your resistance. With a roar that shook the stars, the Necroflux cannon fired. A seething beam of necrotic energy pulsing with unholy power erupted from the weapon's maw. It lanced across the void, straight and true, aimed directly at the heart of the Kepler-22 mining colonies. On the Indomitable's bridge, Burns gripped the arms of his command chair, fingers tightening, eyes wide with horror. He had failed. The colonies, the thousands of innocents he had sworn to protect, they would all die, and it would be his fault. The beam streaked towards its target, the distance shrinking with each passing millisecond. Burns braced for the inevitable, for the moment when the colonies would vanish in a flash of planet-cracking destruction. But that moment never came. Suddenly, violently, a series of massive explosions ripped through the Soul Reaper from stem to stern. The Necroflux beam flickered, wavered, and then dissipated, fading into nothingness just short of the colonies. Secondary detonations blossomed along the Pandronian flagship's hull, tearing through bulkheads and consuming decks. The Soul Reaper listed drunkenly, flames gouting from its ruptured shell. Its lights flickered once, twice, and then died, leaving the ship a drifting, burnt-out husk. On the viewscreen, Kazavoth's image dissolved into static, his final disbelieving screech echoing across the comm before cutting off abruptly. Pern stared at the scene, hardly daring to believe his eyes. The Soul Reaper destroyed, the Necroflux cannon silenced, the colonies saved, but how? Burns stared at the viewscreen, his palms sweating. The Soul Reaper, the Necroflux cannon, Kazavoth's mad laughter. It had all been so close, too close. The colonies had been a hair's breadth from annihilation. A flicker of movement caught his eye. A small, sleek vessel, matte black and angular, detached from the stricken Pandronian flagship's hull, it was a Phantom-class infiltrator, designed for stealth insertions and covert boarding actions. Burns's brow furrowed. What was it doing here? The infiltrator hailed the Indomitable, and Burns opened the channel with a flick of his wrist. The viewscreen persistenced into a familiar face, one that sent a jolt of recognition through the captain's gut. Nolan, Burns blurted out, hardly believing his eyes. Commander Nolan Reeves. Burns' old friend and the Indomitable's chief intelligence officer, grinned back at him from the screen. There was a roguish glint in his eye, despite the sweat and grime coating his face. "'In the flesh, Cap,' Reeves said, his voice crackling over the comm. "'Sorry for the radio silence. Had to keep this one close to the vest.' Burns leaned forward, his mind racing. "'Nolan, what the hell is going on? What were you doing on that Pandronian ship?' Reeves's grin widened. Saving the day, of course. He leaned back in his chair, the picture of nonchalance. We got a tip from a high-level Pandronian defector a few weeks back. Warned us that Antares was planning to deploy a forbidden weapon, something called a Necroflux cannon. Nasty piece of work. Burns nodded grimly. We noticed. Uh, yeah, well, the brass wanted more intel before they'd commit to a strike. So my team and I took a little jaunt over to the Soul Reaper to see what we could dig up. Reeves shrugged, as if infiltrating an enemy dreadnought was just another day at the office. And let me guess, Burns said, piecing it together. 
You found the cannon. Bingo, Reeves confirmed. Damn thing was huge, Cap, size of a frigate at least. Knew we couldn't let the bugs fire that monstrosity. So while you were out here keeping them busy, we snuck aboard and rigged the power core to blow. On the view screen, the Soul Reaper shuddered as another series of explosions rippled through its hull. Reeves glanced over his shoulder, a satisfied smirk on his face. Looks like my boys did their job, he said. Cannon's toast and the Soul Reaper's not looking too hot either. Burns shook his head, a mixture of relief and exasperation warring in his gut. Damn it, Nolan, you took a hell of a risk. If you'd been caught... Reeves waved a hand dismissively. All part of the job, Cap, you know that. His expression sobered. Besides, we couldn't let those bug bastards wipe out the colonies. Too many lives at stake. Burns sighed, knowing his friend was right. Still, the thought of how close they'd come to disaster sent a chill down his spine. Sir, Johnson called out from the tactical station. The Soul Reaper, she's breaking up. Burns turned back to the viewscreen just in time to see the Pandronian flagship shatter into a thousand pieces, consumed by the fires raging within its hull. Escape pods, tiny specks against the inferno, ejected from the dying ship, fleeing the destruction. Nolan, get your team back to the Indomitable, Burns ordered. I want those escape pods captured. If we can get our hands on some high-ranking Pandronians, we might be able to extract some intel on Antares's plans. Reeves snapped a salute, the picture of professionalism once more. Eye cap, we're on our way. The view screen winked out as the infiltrator peeled away from the Soul Reaper's remains, angling towards the Indomitable. Burns turned to Johnson. Get a retrieval team ready. I want those pods secured as soon as possible. Yes, sir, Johnson acknowledged, already relaying the orders. As the Indomitable's shuttle swarmed out to collect the Pandronian escape craft, Burns allowed himself a moment to breathe. They'd won the day against adversity. The colonies were safe, the Necroflux cannon destroyed. It was a victory, hard fought and well earned. But as he watched Kazavoth's pod being tracted into the Indomitable's hangar bay, Burns couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. The Deathbringer's fanaticism, his utter devotion to Antares. It spoke of a deeper rot within the Pandronian Empire, a darkness that threatened to engulf them all. Burns straightened in his chair, his heart made. Whatever came next, whatever Antares had planned, he would be ready. The Indomitable would be ready. They would stand against the darkness at any expense. For now, though, there was work to be done. Burns stood, his eyes fixed on the display as Kazavoth's pod was hauled onto the hangar deck. Exo, the bridge is yours, he said, already striding towards the lift. I'm going to have a little chat with our guest. Johnson nodded, slipping into the command chair as Burns stepped into the lift. As the doors slid shut, Burns allowed himself a small, grim smile. Kazavoth had a lot to answer for, and Burns intended to get those answers, one way or another. The lift descended into the bowels of the ship, carrying Burns towards his destiny and the fate of the galactic realm itself. Burns strode into the Indomitable's brig, his boots ringing on the metal deck. The air was thick with the acrid scent of burnt circuitry and ozone, a testament to the fierce battle that had raged just hours before. In the center of the room, shackled to a reinforced chair, sat Deathbringer Kazavoth. The Pandronian commander looked worse for wear, his chitinous exoskeleton cracked and leaking viscous green fluid, but his compound eyes still glowed with defiance as Burns approached. Kazavoth, Burns growled, his voice low and menacing. You've got a lot to answer for. The Deathbringer's mandibles clicked in what might have been a laugh. I answer only to the Emperor, human. Your pitiful attempts at intimidation mean nothing to me. Burns pounded his fist on the table, the sound echoing through the brig. Your Emperor isn't here, Bug, but I am, and I want answers. What is Antares planning? What's his next move? Kazvoth leaned forward, straining against his bonds. The Emperor's will shall be done, and the Pandronian Empire shall reign supreme. Your worlds will burn, your people will be enslaved, and your precious Republic will crumble to dust. Burns' eyes narrowed. 
This was getting him nowhere. The Pandronian was a fanatic, completely devoted to his emperor. He wouldn't crack no matter how hard Burns pushed. The door to the brig hissed open, and Reeves stepped in, followed by a tall, slender Pandronian in a tattered lab coat. The Pandronian's exoskeleton was a dull silver, and his compound eyes darted nervously around the room. Cap, Reeves said, nodding towards the silver Pandronian. This is Zor-El, the defector I mentioned. Burns turned to Zor-El, his expression guarded. You have information for us. Zor-El nodded, his mandibles twitching. Yes, Captain. Information that could save your Republic, or doom it. The defector stepped forward, his voice trembling slightly. Emperor Antares is mad. He dreams of conquest, of subjugating the galaxy beneath his iron fist. And now, now he has the means to do it. Burns's brow furrowed. The Necroflux cannons. Yes, Zor-El confirmed, but not just one, dozens. Antares has been secretly constructing a massive fleet in a hidden shipyard deep within Pandronian space. Warships jam-packed with Necroflux batteries, each capable of reducing a planet to ash. The captain's blood ran cold. A fleet of planet killers hiding in the shadows ready to strike. What's his target? Zorel shook his head. I don't know for certain, but I fear he means to launch a first strike against the Terran Republic and its allies, to cripple your ability to resist before sweeping across the galaxy like a plague. Burns turned to Reeves, his expression grim. Get me Admiral Sinclair on the horn now. Minutes later, Burns stood before the flickering hologram of Admiral Sinclair, the grizzled commander of the Terran Fifth Fleet. He laid out the situation, presenting the evidence provided by Zor-El. Sinclair's face was carved from granite as he listened, his eyes hard. If what you're saying is true, Captain, then we're facing an existential threat. This hidden fleet could spell the end of the Republic. Burns nodded. Admiral, I request permission to lead a preemptive strike against the shipyard. We have to take out those ships before they can deploy. Sinclair was silent for a long moment, weighing the risks. Then slowly he nodded. Permission granted, Captain. Gather your battle group and set course for Pandronian space. Find that shipyard and destroy it at any cost. The fate of the Republic is in your hands. The hologram winked out, and Burns turned to his crew, his expression resolute. You heard the Admiral. We have our orders. Plot a course for the coordinates provided by Zorrel. Maximum burn. As the Indomitable's engines roared to life, Burns stared out at the stars streaking past the viewports. Somewhere out there, hidden among those infinite points of light, lay the greatest threat humanity had ever faced. A fleet of unimaginable destructive power, poised to strike at the heart of the Republic. But Burns and his crew would find them. They would hunt them down and destroy them, no matter the consequences. For the sake of the Republic, for the sake of every man, woman and child in the galaxy, they could not fail. The Indomitable plunged into the darkness of space, racing towards an uncertain future, and a battle that would decide the fate of billions. The Indomitable shuddered as it plunged into the swirling nebulae and dense asteroid fields of Pandronian space, its escorts close behind. Burns squeezed the armrests of his command chair, eyes fixed on the interface. The treacherous territory was the perfect place for an ambush, and he wasn't about to let his guard down. Suddenly proximity alarms blared across the bridge. Multiple contacts bearing 035, shouted the tactical officer. They're coming out of the asteroid field. On the screen, a dozen sleek angular ships burst from the tumbling rocks, their black hulls almost invisible against the void. Pandronian stealth frigates, fast and deadly. The frigates darted towards the human battle group, weaving between the asteroids with uncanny agility. Then they opened fire. Bolts of searing plasma lanced out from their concealed batteries, stitching across the shields of the Terran ships. The Indomitable rocked as a volley of plasma slammed into its flank, alarms wailing. On the bridge, consoles sparked and crewmen staggered. Damage report, Burns barked. Shields at 60%, came the reply. Hull breaches on decks 4 and 5. 
Perns cursed under his breath. The Pandronians had been waiting for them. They knew the battle group was coming, but how? Sir, the frigates are using the asteroids as cover, Johnson reported, his brow furrowed. Our targeting systems can't get a lock. Burns's mind raced. The Pandronians were whittling them down with hit-and-run attacks, using the terrain to their advantage. He had to change the game. All ships form up, he ordered. Tight defensive formation, diamond pattern. Concentrate your fire and keep those bastards at bay. The Terran vessels maneuvered into position, their hulls gleaming in the nebula's eerie light. They formed a dripping wall of guns and armor, pouring fire into the darting Pandronian ships. But the frigates were too quick, too elusive. They danced between the asteroids, always one step ahead of the Terran guns. Burns smacked his palm on the armrest. They needed to take the fight to the enemy, not just react. And he knew just the man for the job. Reeves, he called over the comm. You're up. Take your team and give those bugs a little surprise. In the Indomitable's armory, Reeves grinned as he sealed his combat armor. With pleasure, Cap. Minutes later, Reeves and his infiltrators emerged from the Indomitable's airlock, maneuvering through the void with thruster packs. They angled towards the nearest frigate, dodging and weaving through the storm of fire. As they neared the Pandronian ship, Reeves armed the magnetic charges on his belt. All right, boys, he said over the team comm. Let's plant some presents. The infiltrators split up, each selecting a critical point on the frigate's hull. They attached the charges, set the timers, and pushed off, jetting back towards the Indomitable. Seconds later, the charges detonated. The frigate shuddered as explosions ripped through its hull, venting atmosphere and crew into the void. It listed, engines flickering, and then went dark. One down, Reeves whooped. Emboldened, the infiltrators moved to the next target and the next. Pandronian frigates shuddered and died under their assault, opening gaps in the enemy formation. On the Indomitable's bridge, Burns watched with grim satisfaction as the tide turned. All ships advance, he commanded. Punch through that line. The Terran battle group surged forward, pouring fire into the weakened Pandronian force. The remaining frigates, their numbers thinned and their surprise lost, broke off and fled back into the asteroids. But Burns wasn't about to let them regroup. Pursue and destroy, he ordered. Don't let a single one escape. As the Terran ships chased down the fleeing Pandronians, Burns turned to Johnson. That ambush was too well-timed to be a coincidence, he growled. They knew we were coming. Johnson nodded grimly. A spy, sir, in our ranks? Find out, Burns said. Quietly, we can't afford any more surprises. The Indomitable shuddered as its guns pounded a fleeing frigate to scrap. Burns stared out at the roiling nebula, his expression resolute. They had weathered the ambush, but at a cost, and he had a sinking feeling that it was just the beginning. As the last Pandronian frigate vanished in a burst of fire, the Terran battle group reformed and pressed on, deeper into enemy territory. Each ship bore the scars of battle, their hulls scorched and pitted, but they were unbowed, driven by an unwavering dedication. Burns stood on the Indomitable's bridge, staring at the tactical display. They were nearing the coordinates provided by Zoral, the location of the supposed Pandronian shipyard. But as the display updated with long-range scan data, Burns felt his blood run cold. It wasn't just a shipyard. It was a fortress, a massive battle station hung in the void, its angular hull jam packed with gun emplacements and missile batteries. A swarm of warships surrounded it like angry hornets, a full battle fleet ready for war. My God, whispered Johnson, it's a command center, and Terry's command center. Burns nodded grimly, and those must be the ships, the ones armed with necroflux cannons, on the display, dozens of dagger-shaped battleships floated in formation around the station, their hulls pulsing with the sickly green light of the alien weapons. Burns felt a chill run down his spine. Each one of those ships had the power to annihilate a world, and there were so many of them. But even as despair threatened to grip him, Burns felt a flicker of hope. This was their chance. 
If they could destroy this station, this nest of vipers, they could cut the head off the Pandronian war machine, end the threat of the Necroflux Armada before it could be unleashed. He turned to his crew, his eyes hard. This is it, he said. This is what we came for. We take out that station and we end this war before it starts. The crew looked back at him, fear and commitment warring on their faces. They knew the odds, knew the risks, but they also knew what was at stake. Burns turned back to the display, his mind racing. A frontal assault on the station was suicide, even for a battle group as strong as theirs. They'd be torn to pieces before they even got within range. But maybe there was another way. Helm, he said, bring us in behind that large asteroid, use it as cover. As the Indomitable slid into the shadow of the massive rock, Burns opened a channel to the rest of the battle group. Here's the plan, he said. We're going to split their forces. The Indomitable will make a run straight for the station, drawing their fire. The rest of you engage that battle fleet. Keep them off our backs. There was a moment of silence on the comm. Then, one by one, the captains of the other ships signaled their acknowledgement. They knew it was a gamble, but it was the only chance they had. Burns turned to Johnson. Bring the ship to battle stations, he said, and get me a firing solution on that station, I want every gun, every missile, every scrap of ordnance we have targeted on that monstrosity. Johnson nodded sharply, relaying the orders. Throughout the ship, crew rushed to their posts, the air thick with tension. Burns settled into his chair, his eyes fixed on the looming form of the battle station. All right, you bastards, he muttered. Let's dance. The indomitable burst from behind the asteroid, engines roaring, guns blazing, it hurtled towards the station like an avenging angel, its hull shimmering with the impacts of a thousand weapons. The Pandronian fleet, caught off guard, scrambled to respond. But it was too late. The Indomitable was already among them, and all hell broke loose. The Indomitable shuddered as it traded blows with the Pandronian battle station, its shields flaring under the onslaught. On the bridge... Burns wrapped his hand around the chairs of his chair, his eyes fixed on the tactical display. The battle was not going well. The station's defences were too strong, its weapons too powerful. At this rate, they'd be blown to atoms before they even scratched the surface. Suddenly the comm crackled to life. Captain Burns, it was Zorl, his voice urgent. I've found a weakness in the station's power core. Burns leaned forward, his heart pounding. Go on. The core is vulnerable to resonance frequencies, Zorel explained. A precise strike at the right frequency could overload it, destroy the entire station. But... But what? Burns pressed. The core is deep within the station, protected by heavy armor and force fields. Your weapons won't breach those defenses. Burns's mind raced. A conventional attack was out of the question, but maybe... Reeves, he barked into the calm, I have a mission for you. Minutes later, Reeves and his team stood in the Indomitable's hangar bay, suited up and armed to the teeth. Burns laid out the plan. You'll capture one of those Pandronian frigates, he said. Use it to slip past the station's defences. Make your way to the power core and plant this. He handed Reeves a small, cylindrical device. It's a resonance charge. When it detonates... It'll overload the core, but it needs to be timed precisely with a concentrated beam from the Indomitable. Reeves nodded, his face grim. We'll get it done, Cap. Burns clasped his shoulder. I know you will, but Reeves, be careful in there. Reeves flashed a cocky grin. Aren't I always? As the infiltration team blasted out of the hangar in a stolen Pandronian shuttle, Burns turned back to the battle at hand. The Indomitable shook as a volley of plasma slammed into its forward shields. Divert power to forward batteries, Burns roared. Keep those bastards off Reeves's back. Inside the Pandronian battle station, alarms blared as Reeves and his team fought their way through the corridors. Pandronian warriors and battle droids swarmed to meet them, filling the air with plasma bolts and shrapnel. Reeves ducked behind a bulkhead as a blast sizzled past his head. Push forward! he shouted over the din. We're almost at the core. But the resistance was fierce. 
One by one Reeves's men fell cut down by enemy fire. By the time they reached the power core chamber, only Reeves and a handful of others remained. They burst into the chamber, guns blazing, and took up positions around the pulsing, glowing core. Reeves armed the resonance charge, his fingers flying over the keypad. Just as he was about to set the timer, a deep, menacing laugh filled the chamber. Reeves spun, his blood running cold. There, striding through the smoke and fire, was Emperor Antares himself. The Pandronian ruler was a towering figure, clad in obsidian armor that seemed to swallow the light. In his hand he held a crackling blade of necrotic energy. Foolish human, Antares hissed, his voice dripping with malice. You dare to challenge me in my own stronghold? Reeves raised his rifle, but Antares was too fast. The emperor lunged forward, his blade slicing through the gun like it was paper. Reeves leaped back, drawing his vibro knife. He knew he was outmatched, but he had to buy time, had to give Burns the chance to fire the resonance beam. He charged at Antares, his blade clashing against the Emperor's in a shower of sparks. They danced a deadly waltz, spinning and striking, parrying and thrusting. On the Indomitable's bridge, Burns watched the timer on the resonance charge tick down. His finger hovered over the firing control for the resonance beam. Come on, Reeves, he muttered. Just a few more seconds. In the power core chamber, Reeves felt his strength waning. Antares was too strong, too fast. The Emperor's blade slipped past Reeves's guard, slicing into his chest. Reeves stumbled back, his vision blurring. Tanataris loomed over him, his eyes glowing with malevolent triumph. He raised his blade for the killing blow. But Reeves, with a last burst of strength, lunged forward. He buried his vibro knife in the gap between Antares's armor plates, twisting it viciously. The Emperor roared in pain and rage, his blade slicing down. And in that moment, the timer on the resonance charge hit zero. In the heart of the Pandronian battle station, Reeves and Emperor Antares clashed in a furious duel. Necrotic energy crackled and hissed as their blades met, the air thick with the stench of ozone. Around them, the power core pulsed and thrummed, its eerie light casting twisted shadows on the walls. Reeves gritted his teeth as he parried a vicious slash from Antares. The Emperor was strong, far stronger than any foe he'd faced before. But Reeves knew he couldn't falter, not now. His team was counting on him. The whole damned Terran Republic was counting on him. He risked a glance over his shoulder, saw his men working feverishly to arm the resonance charge. They were bloodied and battered, but they moved with dogged perseverance, fingers flying over the keypad. Xantaris pressed his advantage, his blade slicing through the air in a blur of motion. Reeves ducked and spun, feeling the searing heat of the weapon as it passed inches from his face. He retaliated with a flurry of strikes, driving the Emperor back a step. "'How you fight well for a human,' Antares snarled, his compound eyes glittering with malice. "'But you only delay the inevitable. The Pandronian Empire will triumph. Your worlds will burn.' Reeves laughed, a harsh bark devoid of humor. Not today they won't. He lunged forward, feinting left, then slashing right. His vibro knife found a gap in Antari's armor, sinking deep into the chitinous flesh beneath. The Emperor roared in pain and rage, his blade coming down in a crushing overhead blow. Reeves caught it on his own blade, the impact sending shockwaves up his arm. He strained against Antari's strength feeling his knees start to buckle. Charge is set, one of his men shouted. Thirty seconds. Reeves' eyes widened. Thirty seconds. He just had to hold Antares off for thirty more seconds. He disengaged, rolling to the side as Antares' blade cleaved into the deck, where he'd been standing a heartbeat before. He came up in a crouch, his knife held before him. Antares advanced, his movements fluid and predatory. Your struggle is futile, he hissed. You cannot hope to defeat me. Reeves met the Emperor's gaze, a grim smile on his lips. I don't have to defeat you, he said. I just have to outlast you. He charged, a wordless battle cry tearing from his throat. He crashed into Antares, tackling him to the ground. They grappled and rolled, trading blows, each trying to gain the upper hand. Fifteen seconds! 
Reeves heard the shout, felt a surge of desperate energy he had to hold on just a little longer. Antari's blade slashed across his chest, drawing a line of fire. Reeves barely felt it. His world had narrowed to this moment, this fight. Nothing else mattered. Five seconds. Antares reared back, his blade poised for a killing strike. Reeves saw it coming, knew he couldn't dodge in time. He did the only thing he could. He lunged forward, driving his knife into Antares's throat, even as the Emperor's blade plunged into his chest. Pain exploded through him, white-hot and all-consuming. He heard Antares' gurgling cry, felt the Emperor's body go limp. Charges armed. Burns, fire the resonance beam. Fire it now. Reeves felt a smile tug at his lips. They'd done it. His team had done it. As the darkness closed in, he thought of Burns, of the Indomitable, of the Terran Republic he'd sworn to defend. Give em hell, Cap, he whispered. Then the world went white, and Nolan Reeves knew no more. On the bridge of the Indomitable, Burns stared at the battle station, his finger hovering over the firing control. Reeves's last transmission echoed in his ears, a plea and a command all in one. He hesitated, just for a moment. He knew what firing the beam would mean, knew that Reeves and his team would be caught in the blast, that they would be sacrificing their lives for the greater good. It was a terrible choice, an impossible choice, but it was a choice that had to be made. With a heavy heart, Burns gave the order, Fire the resonance beam! The indomitable shuddered, as its main cannon unleashed a concentrated stream of energy, a lance of pure destruction that cut through the void towards the battle station's power core. It struck the resonance charge, and for a moment nothing happened. Then a blinding flash, brighter than a thousand suns, a shockwave that rippled out, shattering ships and asteroids alike, a roar that seemed to shake the very fabric of space itself. The battle station exploded, torn apart from within by the catastrophic overload of its power core, its hull shattered, spilling debris and bodies into the void. A miniature supernova in the heart of Pandronian space. On the Indomitable's viewscreen the flash faded, revealing a field of tumbling wreckage where the battle station had once been. No trace remained of Emperor Antares, of Reeves and his team. They were gone sacrificed for the safety of the Terran Republic. Around the Indomitable, the Pandronian fleet fell into chaos. Ships milled about aimlessly, their chain of command severed with the loss of their emperor and their command center. Some tried to flee, some tried to fight on, but it was a losing battle. The Terran battle group, seizing their chance, pressed the attack. Particle beams and torpedoes lanced out, cutting through the disorganized Pandronian ships like a scythe through wheat. One by one, the enemy vessels winked out, consumed by fireballs that flared briefly and died in the void. Soon all that remained was a field of debris and the drifting hulks of destroyed ships. The battle was over. The Terran Republic had won. But as Burns stood on his bridge surveying the carnage, he felt no elation, no sense of triumph only a hollow ache in his chest, a grief that threatened to consume him. They had won, yes, but the cost had been high, too high. Reeves was gone, along with so many other brave men and women, heroes, every one of them. They had given their lives so that others might live, so that the Terran Republic might endure. Burns would make sure their sacrifice was not in vain. He would carry on the fight, in their memory and in their honour, but for now, in this moment, he allowed himself to grieve, to feel the weight of the lives lost, the friends gone forever. He stared out at the stars, at the infinite expanse of the cosmos. Somewhere out there, beyond the veil, Reeves and his team were waiting, watching. "'I'll make you proud, my friend,' Burns whispered, his words a solemn vow. "'I'll make you all proud.' The war was far from finished. The Pandronian Empire, even without Antares, remained a deadly foe. There would be more battles to come, more sacrifices to be made. But the Terran Republic would endure. It would fight on no matter the odds at any expense. For that was the Terran way, the only way. 
Zorrell approached Burns, his expression somber. Emperor Antares may be dead, the defector said, but the Pandronian Empire is far from defeated. Without Antares's iron grip, rival factions will vie for control. The resulting power struggle could plunge the galaxy into even greater turmoil. Burns nodded, his heart made. He knew Zorrell was right. The road ahead would be hard, fraught with new dangers and challenges. But he also knew that the Terran Republic would rise to meet those challenges, as it always had. With courage, with grit, with an unbreakable spirit. The spirit embodied by heroes like Reeves and his team. The spirit that burned in the heart of every Terran citizen. It was that spirit that would see them through the dark times ahead. That would light the way to a brighter future. Burns turned to his crew, his eyes hard with willpower. Set course for Terran space, he ordered. We're going home. As the Indomitable leapt into FTL, the stars blurring into streaks of light, Burns allowed himself a moment of quiet reflection. The battle was won, but the war continued, and he would be there to lead the charge, to stand against the darkness no matter the odds. For he was a Terran, a defender of the Republic and he would never surrender. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.